Welcome back! We will briefly discuss how to do a gastronomy procedure. This is the last lecture video for this chapter. Gastronomy or the creation of a surgical incision on the stomach is indicated for gastric foreign body removal if endoscopy turned out to be unsuccessful or this, equip uh, this equipment is just not available or if the foreign body has sharp edges and um, bringing it up through the esophagus would actually damage the esophageal wall lining. So it is advised that you do gastrotomy. Like for other abdominal surgeries, we have discussed the patient is positioned on its dorsal recumbency, the hair is clipped from siphoid to pubis, and it is aseptically prepped with diluted chlorhexidine or diluted povidone iodine, solution and alcohol. Surgical approach is the ventral midline abdominal incision. Make sure to explore the entire abdominal cavity first before doing exteriorizing the stomach. Check for any signs of perforation, free fluid, and signs of peritonitis. There's free fluid and the quality of this fluid is not clear. For example, it's mucopurulent it is blood tinge or what we call serosanguineous, um, then these are signs that could actually point you to peritonitis. Once you have assessed everything, you have suctioned the free fluid, isolate the stomach from the abdomen with saline moisten, uh, moistened laparator, laparotomy sponges. Gosh, such a mouthful, sorry. Now, a gastronomy incision is made on the avascular aspect of the stomach, as seen in this image. Anatomy review. Where are the blood vessels on the stomach? Where is it concentrated on? As you can see here in this image, the blood vessels are concentrated on the greater and the lesser curvatures. So you must avoid these areas and place your incision on the middle. Once you have isolated the stomach from the rest of the abdominal cavity, face sutures are placed on the two ends of the stomach wherein the incision is planned to be placed. This is done to better manipulate the gastric air uh, of the stomach and to prevent spillage of the gastric contents. Um, fun fact, um, the stomach might appear that it's, it wants to get out of the body, but once you enter, the stomach, once you do your initial incision, the stomach will actually gravitate downward. So you need to keep it um, on that surface outside of the abdominal cavity. That is why you need your stay sutures. The gastric wall is entered through a stab incision and it is enlarged with medicine bomb scissors. Now, only make an incision that fits the foreign body. You do not need to make a bigger incision if your foreign body is so small, all right? Do not make your um, incision go through the pyloric area and the cardio area to prevent any damage to the sphincters on both sides. Those steps are seen in these images. Apply necessary traction on the stay sutures, as seen here, these two, to keep the stomach visualized. The laboratory sponges are there to catch any gastric fluid and ingesta that might spill out from the gastrotomy incision. In no way, again, in no way should these fluids be in contact with the other structures within the abdominal cavity because that is contamination. You may, f you may feel for the foreign body with your fingers and grab it with a pair of forceps. Some foreign bodies are so big that they will protrude from the gastrotomy incision, making a removal easier. Once the foreign body is removed, check the gastric wall for any perforations and or ulcerations. You may also flush the inside but make sure to catch the fluid with your lap sponges or your suctioning unit if you have one available. Now, this is a very important thing. Before suturing the gastric wall, 
it is important to remove the lap sponges and change to a new set of instruments which were in contact with the gastric lumen, change your laboratory uh, laparotomy sponges, and change into a new set of gloves. This is done to prevent any contamination of the other organs with the ingesta. The stomach is then closed with a 2O or 3O absorbable monofilament suture material. Chromic gut is avoided because it is rapidly removed by digestion and phagocytosis and tends to dehisce. We usually go for a monofilament absorbable suture like polydioxinone, monocryl or polygecaprone, or maxa. The stomach is closed in a two-layer seromuscular pattern. The first layer, which includes the tunica serosa, muscularis, and submucosa, is opposed with a simple continuous pattern, which is covered with an inverting continuous pattern such as a lembert or a cushing. Your suture bites ideally must be at least 4 millimeters bites of gastric wall and are 3 millimeters apart. But again, that is just a suggestion. Your suture bites must never include the tunica mucosa. This is a non-penetrating suture. Since uh, gastric ulcers were found to form along the suture line if it penetrates the mucosa. The tunica submucosa remains to be the holding layer because it is the layer which contains the most collagen, so it is tough on its own. Now, question. What kind of needle are we going to use in this closure? A cutting or a round needle? Any guess? Is it a cutting or a round needle? Well, some veterinarians actually prefer a cutting needle since, according to them, it easily goes into the submucosa than a round needle because the submucosa is so tough. But again, um, our rule, as always, is if it's inside the body, you use round. If it's on the skin, you use um, a cutting needle. Now, this is one of the exceptions for some of the veterinarians. Now, you might have not realized is that I skipped on an important step when operating on a gastrointestinal part. We did not check for leakage. Well, they said that there is no need to check for leakage for two reasons. Number one, checking for leakage means that you have to fill up the, f the whole stomach with fluid and then watch if any escaped, uh, if any fluid escaped through your suture line. That seems very impractical because the stomach has a very high fluid capacity. And to recreate that um, situation wherein the stomach is full of ingesta and it's contracting, and you checking your suture line if there's any leakage, seems to be quite impractical. And number two, remember we closed the incision with a two-layer incision. Uh, suture pattern. Number one is the simple continuous pattern and it is overlapped by this inverting, sorry, this inverting suture pattern. Uh, that could be a Lambert or a Cushing. We cover the primary closure with an inverting suture pattern to make sure that nothing will leak. So that is actually your safeguard. But I but I always check for leakage anyway. But what I do is I do not fill the whole stomach with fluid. What I do is I sandwich the sutured area with my fingers, and with my hands and my fingers, depending on how big the incision I made. And I put pressure on it and see if there are any gaps wherein the leakage can happen. Gastric incisions tend to heal quickly. How so? The stomach wall first has an extensive blood supply on both curvatures. And remember, your surgical incision, as seen in this image right here, is strategically placed on the middle of these two curvatures. So when the inflammation happens in response to the normal healing, you are assured that the incision would get an adequate blood supply. Number two, 
The stomach has reduced bacterial numbers as compared to the intestinal tract. So the chance of um, any bacterial contamination or infection around that suture line is de much decreased as compared to the intestinal tract. Number three, there's, uh, the stomach undergoes a rapid epithelial regeneration since it undergoes regular physical stress during the digestive process when it is um, continually contracting to digest food. And lastly, due to the positioning of the stomach relative to the omentum, the omentum can lend its defense mechanisms to the stomach. Now, hemorrhage rarely occurs if you have placed your incision on the right place. However, if it does occur, sometimes it does, especially when there's this outlier blood vessel that you cannot um, keep from hitting, uh, you can arrest the hemorrhage using dental pressure only, right? The usual clamping with hemostatic forceps, ligating the vessels with sutures, or the use of electrocautery cannot be used, right? For the electrocautery, you cannot use it for the intestinal tract and the stomach, or even the esophagus, because as you remember from physiology, you have uh, this gut brain. The stomach is continually contracting and contra contracting, even if we do not have to think about it, right? This is what we call an autonomic response. The gut itself has its own, open quote, quot quotation marks, um, brain. It has a gut brain, meaning there is... Um, various sensory and motor functions that are thrown both ways from the spinal cord to the different visceral, visceral organs to regulate the peristalsis. So if you use electrocautery in any part of the stomach, you could actually um, cause a short circuit of some sort in this autonomic nervous system, and that could compromise the nerve supply of that so that caps off our discussion on gastric surgeries, and you will have another video assignment. Just kidding. No video assignments. I have successfully attached the video within this lecture video. So um, kindly watch and observe um, the technique for removing a gastric foreign body. The rubber band is the part that's inside of the hair band usually. It like it erodes. Yeah. Halfway there. That one was probably in there for months. Look at all that. I don't even have half of it. Thanks so much. 
Oh, yeah, this definitely tops my 30 something I've seen. Yeah, yeah I'm sure. out at 17. Mm -hmm. And I think I might even be out at 32. <laughs> on the ground. Until now. How, how do you get I mean, that she's many? two years old. She's probably been doing this since kittenhood. Yes. How do you get that many here? Just two so years many for kids. kids. Yeah. Has it ever passed when the owner was ever like, that's weird? Probably not. Or is it all in the stomach? Or you know? It's all in the stomach.